The LastPass hack sent shivers through the internet as millions of users were stuck resetting all of their passwords. Bitwarden saw this and decided to take action so that their users can configure their password vaults to be uncrackable. But in order to do this, you have to do two things. In this video, I'll show you what those two things are so that you can turn your Bitwarden vault into Fort Knox. Now, the main reason that the LastPass hack was so bad was because the hackers got access to the customer vaults. This meant that they were in a position to try to crack the master password for those password vaults, which would then open up all of those users' passwords to the attacker. And as details emerged as how LastPass secured those passwords, it became obvious that those users' passwords were going to be susceptible to password cracking. Password cracking is when a hacker attempts to guess the password for an account. This is essentially where the hacker is just going to automate guessing all of these different password combinations to try to see which one works and unlocks the vault. Now this could be done by a dictionary attack where there are just billions and billions of common passwords that the attacker is going to go through and guess one by one. Or this could be even more complicated where it's literally just going to try to brute force its way in by guessing every single character combination possible. Now, while that seems far-fetched, today's computers, especially with graphics cards, you can turn your systems into password cracking machines. So the weaker your password is, the easier it is for the hacker to crack that password. But as I mentioned, there are two things that you can do today to help make your passwords become uncrackable. The first starts with your master password to your Bitwarden vault. This is the first step that you cannot get wrong. You have to use a secure master password. But what's secure? Bitwarden's online guidance is that you should use a password that's over 16 characters long. This will include letters, numbers, and special characters. But that's just the minimum. We want to go bigger here to make sure that your password vault is uncrackable. So what I recommend is using something known as a passphrase. A passphrase is just a series of words that are easy to remember, but also give you a longer character count. This can be something like your favorite quote from a movie or a book, or just a series of random things that stand out and are easy to remember. Mix in some punctuation here or there, a couple numbers, and you have a very, very strong master password that's going to help you in the first step to making your password vault uncrackable. But I'm guessing you already knew that you need to have a very strong master password. So let's get into the next step of making your password vault uncrackable. And it starts with trying to make it as difficult as possible for a hacker to try to crack that password. Some quick background here. When you're entering your password into your password vault, you're not actually sending the password over to Bitwarden. In reality, what's happening is your master password is being used to generate a master key. That master key is then used to create a master password hash. That hash is then sent over to Bitwarden to verify that the password is accurate. This makes sure that you're not sending your password over to Bitwarden and that Bitwarden has no knowledge of what your password is. This is important to understand because the way that we slow a password cracker down is by making it more difficult to go from the password itself into that password hash. The more time that you can take to do that, the harder it is or the longer it will take a hacker to try to crack your password. This whole conversion from password to hash is done by what's known as a key derivation function, or KDF for short. And yes, I know it sounds very fancy, but it's very important that you remember KDF. It really is all the security behind how your online password stays safe and how you can make your password vault uncrackable. The important thing here is we want to make it as long and difficult as possible for the attacker to try to guess that password. And this is where the second defense comes into play, the KDF setting. So let's dig into this and how you can change this on Bitwarden to keep your account even more secure. Before we do anything though, let's back up your password vault because in some rare situations, you could get locked out of your password vault. To do this, log into your password vault and go over into the tool section and then go into export vault. At this point, you can keep it as a JSON file and then just say confirm format. 
Here, you're gonna be required to enter your master password to make sure that it's you who's going to export this. And then that will get exported out to a JSON file. If you needed to in the future, you could import this back into a Bitwarden so that you can restore all of your passwords. Make sure that you delete this at the end of this process so that it's no longer sitting on your system. Okay, now that those passwords are safe and sound, let's dig into the KDF setting. So we're gonna head back over to Bitwarden and we're gonna go over into our account settings. From here, you're gonna click on security and then you're gonna click on keys. Everything that we need to change is going to be on this screen. The default KDF algorithm is going to be set to PBK DF2 SHA-256 with 600,000 KDF iterations. This default setting is good enough for the US government who is mandating these amounts to be FIPS 140 compliant, which is an encryption standard. But we can do better than this. We wanna make this more secure than the US government so that your password vault is going to be uncrackable. So let's dig into what settings you should use for your system. The first thing we wanna do is switch it to Argon2 ID. This is the most secure option that you can have. In fact, it won a 2015 password hashing competition. Yes, that's actually a thing. And it's really important because it tested all of the various different hashing algorithms and found that Argon2 was the most secure. Argon2 works by allocating a specific amount of memory, the KDF memory, and filling that with the computed hash until it's full. This is repeated multiple times, the KDF iterations, across a number of threads or the KDF parallelism. The higher the numbers are, the longer it's going to take for a hacker to try to crack this password. Now, the downside here is the higher those numbers, the longer it's also gonna take you in order to unlock your password vault but that's an acceptable trade-off for making your password vault uncrackable. If you're interested in a deep dive of how all of that works, leave a comment and I'll make a future video that outlines exactly that. Let's dig in now though to the recommended settings based on your level of paranoia. For paranoia level one, we'll stick with the defaults. You have KDF memory of 64 megabytes, you have KDF iterations at three, and KDF parallelism at four. Now these alone are going to be really good and they're gonna be much better than what was configured before. So we're in a good position to make a hacker's life more difficult by trying to crack your password, but we can still do better. One thing to keep in mind is that we have to operate from your least powerful device that you're going to be using to unlock this password vault. Because this can be computationally heavy, we wanna make sure that you're not sitting there for an hour waiting for your password vault to unlock for your weakest device. So if you're using an Apple phone in particular and you wanna use the autofill capabilities and you don't wanna use biometric unlock, you're gonna to wanna to stay at these default levels. If that doesn't apply to you, let's go to paranoia level two, where we're gonna increase some of these settings. For this, we're gonna up the memory to 500 megabytes, we're gonna push the KDF iterations to six, and then we're gonna push the parallelism to eight. So you can see, we're basically just doubling this. But if you wanna go super, super secure, let's take this to the absolute max that Bitwarden is going to allow us. So for that, we're gonna push our KDF memory to 1024, that's a gigabyte. We're gonna push the KDF iterations to 10, and we're gonna push the parallelism to 16. You literally can't go higher than this. If we tried, you can see it just maxes out. So this is where we're gonna live. I'm just gonna stick to what the defaults were before so that we can set this up here. So I'll pop those back in. I'm gonna select change KDF, and then it's gonna prompt me for the master password for my Bitwarden vault. So I'll go ahead and pop that in and then select change KDF. At this point, you're gonna see a pop-up that says the encryption key settings were changed and you're gonna be prompted to log back in to Bitwarden. So I'll go ahead and log back in and we're gonna see it's gonna be a little bit slower than it's been in the past, but that's okay. You barely even notice it here. Now, I like to have my account set up with multi-factor authentication. So you can see I'm getting prompted for that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in as well and then we should be able to log in without any issue. Now, just for fun, let's go see what that difference is in the login time by upping that amount a little bit more. So again, I'll go back 
to my settings, security, keys, and I'm just gonna go ahead and see if I can go to 500 now. We'll double this, and let's change the KDF again. It's gonna prompt me again for my master password. Change that, and now it's just doing its thing. Okay, so that was successful. You can see that it was a little bit of a longer wait there, but I'm gonna go ahead and sign in again, and let's just time this out and see what it's like here. So we'll go ahead, pop our master password in. You can see it's thinking a lot harder now because it's just trying to go through all of these computations to figure out what that password hash is to send over to Bitwarden. So all of this is happening on my device. And there we go. We've just unlocked that. So I'll go ahead again and pop in my multi-factor authentication code here. And we'll be able to log back in to our account. So you can see you're gonna wanna do a little bit of trial and error here to see what works for your systems. And again, keep in mind, if you're using your mobile app for this, it is going to be slower than your computer. So waiting for about 10 seconds or so might be acceptable for a trade-off of making your passwords uncrackable. But if you're waiting for 30 minutes to unlock your password vault on your mobile device and that's critical for your use case, that might not work out for you. So Test this out, see what works, and just make sure that you are taking the appropriate steps to balance security with convenience. Now, if there was ever a hack of Bitwarden and your password vault was compromised, with these settings in place, it's going to be almost impossible with today's computing power to crack your password. So you can feel much safer that your passwords are safe and sound. If you're interested in learning more about Bitwarden's features or different functionalities or anything at all with cybersecurity, drop me a note in the comments and I'll make sure I can take care of that in future videos. Until then, if you haven't seen this video on passwordless technologies, check it out because this is going to be the future of passwords or more importantly, no passwords.